This is Lorna Jane. She's the latest refit that I've completed and I'm very proud to say that she's the very first electric fishing vessel in the UK register. My name's Hans Uncles. Primarily I'm a fisherman. That's where my heart belongs. So I've been fishing and building boats since the 80s and I fish off the west coast of Scotland for lobsters and crabs. My family's been involved in fishing for generations. It's a way of life. Fishing's about the hunting, the freedom, the pleasure you have in doing your job. To prove this boat's capability, I've set up a few demonstrations for you. I had quite a lot of fun watching the cameraman as the boat went through these rough seas. And as you can see, she's very capable and able to handle what's been thrown at her. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a wee experiment, not done this before, we're going to try towing a bigger boat, 12 metre Gemini catamaran. Right, you can let it off Chaz! So that's us running at 800 revs out of 1200 revs, we've got a whole pile more to give that. Believe it or not, we're only using 5 kilowatts of power there, out of 20. That must weigh 15 tonnes or something and it's pretty effortless. Two and a half knots. That's no bother. I'm quite happy. So I could probably tow that boat for, for seven hours at that speed. You'd certainly get them out of trouble with that. You surprised? <laughs> so let's let's simulate a snag where you've got gear stuck in the bottom. So we've attached ourselves to a, a fairly heavy mooring and give that a lift and see what happens. You got that? That's the hauler passing and my sphincter passing. <laughs> There's no doubt that that's got power. <laughs> From my point of view, that's pretty similar to any any snag that you get. Your, the boat's heeling over and all the power's going into it. At the moment we're using just three and a half kilowatts or something to power the boat along five knots. And to put that into some context, a standard house kettle uses three kilowatts. So the same it takes to boil your kettle is what's driving us along just now. I mean, electric is incredibly efficient. One litre of diesel holds 10 kilowatts of energy. Four and a half litres, which is one gallon of diesel, holds 45 kilowatts of energy, which is my entire battery capacity. So if I had a fuel tank in my boat, it would be one gallon. So that's a pretty good demonstration of how inefficient diesel is. I love the fact that while I'm out fishing, I get free power from the sunshine all day long. So it's the middle of March, and that's it's almost a kilowatt coming in purely off of solar. So there we are, that's us, pretty much zero amps coming in and out. We're now going to three knots entirely off of solar, so you can carry on at that all day long. Pretty satisfying. So these are bifacial panels, which means that they take the glare from the sea and take power in from the bottom side as well as the top side. Fishermen can be wary of change and that's why I think it's important that I address some of the misconceptions here. You may have heard or seen of batteries catching fire. The lithium iron phosphate that I have are recognised as batteries that do not catch fire. This is a battery chemistry that the MCA will approve. In the winter time for me, charging's not a problem. I base the boat where there's a pontoon with shore power and it's just a plug and go. In the summer time, I don't have any fuel bills. I can work two to three days a week purely off of solar. Charging infrastructure for more remote areas is a problem that needs to be addressed. I'm fishing at a retired man's age where I'm not pushing it hard. So if you're young and driven and you want to fish daily and a lot of creels, this will still work for that but you need the infrastructure in place, you need to be able to charge from shore power. And one of the complications I see with this boat is ropes in the propeller. The motor will shut down if it gets a rope in the prop. It's not fully tangled in, so it's easy to untangle, but to avoid ropes getting flushed over the side, I've put weld mesh over the scuppers. The first question everyone asks is always about range. So this boat's got a 60 mile range, if you're getting a good solar day, then I can come back with over 50% of the battery capacity left. 
So I've done 1,500 miles with the boat. I've averaged 24 miles a day. I've not yet been in the situation where I've been worried about battery capacity. It's not been an issue. So the cost of this project, of this boat, is big. It's not really economically viable standing on its own. Currently there's funding available to convert your boat to all electric that will let you access up to 90% of the costs of converting your boat. And you would access that fund through the Marine Management Organisation and the fund is called the UK Seafood Fund. This style of boat won't fit every form of fishing. One of the bigger obstacles is that it does five knots. I just worked around that. I've kind of changed my pace of life to suit that. A slow boat would be per perceived as doing less fishing, but you could still work a good number of creels on a daily basis going at, going at this speed. When you weigh up that you're spending so much less on the running costs and repairs and breakdowns, but wintertime electric fuel bills are tiny compared to what they were with diesel. You actually need to earn less to walk out with the same money at the end of the day, so I'm not actually any worse off for working at a slower pace. I feel that if you're not embracing these kind of changes, you're going to get left behind. And the fishing industry is very guilty of that, sticking your feet in and wanting to keep your methods and the way you do things. But this is real, there's changes coming, and if you're not set up for them, you are going to be left behind. And this has been a fantastically interesting, nourishing project. I'm loving this concept. It works, and if you're first in with new methods in fishing, you're almost always going to be a winner out of that. For me, the silence is a huge benefit. The working conditions are really good, and at the end of the day, you still feel really fresh. The big picture here is that this boat is fishing at a commercial level, and it's not burning any diesel.